All right, here we go. Wait, wait, let me finish a sip of this carcinogen. <laughs> Please let me keep this in. Is that your caffeine choice? I ate a nail about an hour ago. And so the only way to dissolve it is with uh, Coca-Cola. What kind of nail? I was just, I was doing carpentry yeah. and I was hammering up some molding and a, a double-headed nail just went down my throat. I had my mouth open, double-headed nail went down my throat. I'm not gonna pass it. So right. all I can do is drink this product that people have seen over the years and it literally will burn through the nail. So I'll be, I'll be fine. That's, there's a lot of follow-up questions I would ask. Just the, I guess the most important one is I'm surprised that you do your own molding, that you don't have like a guy, you're Bob Saget. No, and I'm also going to do my own surgery when this process that I'm trying doesn't work. <laughs> when I can't shit my nail. My, right, asshole's, a, my asshole's a nail gun. <laughs> <laughs> I eat a bunch of nails. Bob Saget shoots nails from his ass, not in the Wikipedia, which I just read to prepare for you. Right. Isn't that weird? Because with my podcast, I'll look up people's stuff and will not go to Wikipedia because it's half of it's wrong. My Wikipedia is wrong about me. It's like, what? So your podcast is very, very good. I, oh, God, thank you. I thought you were you could have gone either direction. <laughs> I think it might be. It's a sad, the, Maybe this doesn't sound weird. To me, it's my favorite thing than, that you've ever done. You haven't seen me have sex. I would. I, I've seen your wife. I, I in my hey, 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 hey. Come on. Well, who are you? You watched me drinking a soda just now and dumping it in a garbage can. That's how. Uh, who am I? How, who am I supposed to imagine you having sex with? If not that, I guess yourself. That would be about it. <laughs> I can't wait to that final. Or, or executives at that other place. You, we don't speak. <laughs> Series six M. I'd go back. Listen. You are here today to talk about critical race theory. And um, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I also want to say that because of the uh, young Gen Zers that believe everything that some putrid person puts on the Internet, yes. if you're under 15 and don't understand um, the past and how comedy has been different over the years and how um, just don't listen to this because we're going to say stuff that might be uh, not it's not comprehensible from your experience or your ears. And I also feel bad for people that believe uh, sometimes a mob of people that make up lies. So these kids today are the future. Children are our future. So uh, they My, gotta, uh, I just don't want kids listening to this podcast. That's have, what I've been, I've been doing that with mine. I have Gilbert on, on uh, Monday. So yeah. right after we're done doing this, I'm going to talk to Gilbert. And when Gilbert and I uh, talk, I, I have to, preface it by saying you, you kids can't listen to this because it, it's all um, comedy. It's, it's, I'm just checking to make sure everything's on. I'm such a pro. Your podcast is great. Really? I, I, let me see if the mic's on. Um, well, but yeah, uh, people don't understand what we understand because we come from a different time. Has anything terrible uh, been said or done that's actually caught on about you from something that was like said at a roast or? I yeah, that's where it happened. That's where it happened. So, so kids uh, through TikTok, I, I was just innocent. What? And I wrote a book, my New York Times bestseller. You helped me uh, yeah. promote it. You, thank you. It's called Dirty Daddy, which is a great title for a book right now. And uh, <laughs> see, what the people don't realize is it was different than we made jokes about the worst things possible because that's how we got through them. They can't understand that. I can't expect a 12 year old to understand it. But the people that try to spread bad things, one guy got taken down because he was illegally posting stuff. And another person is like an ex-porn actress. And she goes and puts up this thing and a million kids see it or, or, or a little bit older and just not smart and believe the mob. And it was basically saying that my roast was the news, that the, the roast, the comedy roast. And there it is. Look at it above me. Look above me. There's a poster from it right up there. Amazing. Amazing. That's the roast of, of me. And that was a, a big hit at the time. And it, it really is full of a lot of jokes that I didn't once said about people that I love. Um, and, uh, you know, there were a lot you know, of jokes right? about there were jokes about Ashley Mary Kate in there yeah. done by other comedians. I never did them. And it was and they knew about it and they watched it and they love me and I love them. But you can't convince a woke mob 
you know, uh, did it hurt their feelings? I was really concerned about it because I asked the producer not to do the jokes and everybody did them. Um, and uh, that's all I can say is things don't, it's not the news. It was people saying bad stuff, but well, they actually, are, they're like my dearest, fr they're like my family. So anybody that says that shit makes me want to punch them in the nose because uh, I, they're, I'm close with them and I uh, love them. I love all the people from that show. So that's, People, people are, I don't know, they're just, they're, they're, it's unfortunate where people go now, mentally. Well, I'm super sorry to hear that, and I do have to tell you. But it's, it's nothing, I mean, it's kind of almost gone away, except some of the woke kids, but I just block everybody now. Well, my, I, so I don't I care, good. I get rid of people. I was just good, I w that's the best thing to do. I was just with my 13-year-old daughter, I go, you know who I'm interviewing tonight? She's like, who? And I go, Bob Saget from Full House. She's like, you are? I go, right. yeah. And she goes, why, why would he talk to you? Which was kind. <laughs> well, she's not part of the the uh, unwoke mob. Well, the, she goes the, the, the mob that isn't goes, woke. She then goes, "Didn't he do something like bad or something like that?" Oh, that's TikTok. Wow. And I go, "What?" And and she's like, "Yeah, something like assault or something." I go, "I I like stop the car." I go, "See, that's bad." So I that go, makes me I go, I go, Bob Saget is legitimately uh, to the people know him even a little the best guy in entertainment. He's a great guy. And he's no, no one thinks anything. Ever well, these about. these kids do. And it was spread by evil, oh. ba bad people. But that's also in my book. I talked about something that happened on the set and it was, I am expounded. You know, how the, uh, your publishers say, Oh, make it worse. You know? So I, you know, let's really double down on right. the, the uh, tabloidness of this. So I did, I did stuff to make people laugh, you know? And if a kid goes, you drew a dick on a full house script. I went, yes, I was sitting next to Dave and John and nobody else saw it. Kids didn't see it. I was in junior, I had, it's, it's, it's a grown up being talked to like a child cause you're on a kid's show. And that's how we passed the time. Cause it was, we didn't do it all the time. We did it a few times at readings, but it was just funny. It was just, it was just, and nobody took offense. And, you know, once I, I got to tell you, the I got to tell you, whenever I uh, see Ashley and Mary Kate, when they came to see my last play in New York or when uh, they come to my scleroderma benefits because I lost my sister to scleroderma, none of these people even Google to see what the truth is. Right. You, and you can't even get the truth in Google. But anyway, I don't want to dwell on that. It's just sad that your daughter uh, picked up on that because I don't. I don't deserve that blemish on my record because even in my book, I apologized in the moment. I apologized. For well, it. I'll tell you what. I mean, you know, uh, I think that it's a good way to get into what I really wanted to discuss with you, which is, is, getting, is yourself getting removed. You're, <laughs> well, I, I got called uh, a pedophile for a week by about a million Twitter accounts because the like one of the biggest names in the right wing media, sp you know, reacted to something I said. I've been called I've been called that also. And that's like I actually want to tell those people the you know what I want to tell them, but well, I, which is not a nice word. Here's what I and, and the second word is off or themselves because I'm a, I am the really good father that they want me to be. Yeah, yeah. I am the guy that's Danny Tanner. I just always had a weird sense of humor because my parents lost four children and we made sense we made jokes out of sick stuff because we barely survived and my dad would have a sick sense of humor and a sense of humor that's gallows humor or real negative dark humor doesn't mean you're that person so uh i don't know how to explain it to a 12 year old but i am the father that they wish that i was i mean for god's sakes i got a dust rag right here i clean my glasses like danny tanner you know i hug i've hugged you from behind and we played banjo music that that 12 year old just hated me again. But no. the truth of it is, it's all, you know, I also went on Opie and Anthony in the morning and yeah. told a story that was in the book and all that shit. So those are the three things, by the way, that's it. That's what they based that I had done terrible things too, which is just, it was all done. And, and it was, I hated the way I came off and I am disgusted by how that looked. It, seven in the morning, going into Open Anthony, trying to brag and be part of the boys club 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's just 10 years ago, whatever it is, it's it's not right. And I wouldn't do a lot of stuff that I did then now. I love my new standup. I love my new approach to everything. I've grown up, I'm 65, you know, and uh, people just don't uh, know me. And if they did, 
they would apologize. I, I deserve an apology from all the people on TikTok that have that your poor daughter had to hear them say such horrible things because I own all my shit. I apologized in the book immediately. I shouldn't have done that stupid thing with that prop doll, you know, for 10 seconds, but I made it sound like more, but it's bad anyway. It's bad messaging. I just never thought it would go anywhere, but I put it in a book. <laughs> so I put it in a book, right? Well, and then, then they'll write, he laughed maniacally. You know, they'll take this clip. I was trying to get ready to talk to you and I've listened to your podcast in the past, but I hadn't listened to it in, in a little while. And I was like, what should I listen to? And I decided to listen to, I couldn't decide because there's so many great guests that you have on. Obviously I love when two comedians are talking, but I listened to Jason Sudeikis from last year, which is great. Boy, I love him. But I also, but my favorite one, and the, and I chose it specifically, was your conversation with Jody Sweeten. Yeah. Because if people want to know, like you have three daughters, I right? Three daughters? I have three daughters, 34, had- 30. My daughters are 34, 31, and 28. And they are really deeply upset by anything derogatory said about me sure. because yeah. they know me. Yeah, and I I met and hung out with uh, two of your daughters at yeah I want to talk to you about that at the show you were in um, yeah you're under arrest which was so great and they were so cool and so proud of you and then you know listening to I'm so proud of them Jody who played what was her uh, name in Full House Jody Uh, Stephanie in case I'm trying to get out of the thing I look at that that thing blocks my head your stand up thing oh oh no oh no it's fine my little logo no it is now. But I have to move myself in order not to be. You're trying to cock block my head. The point is, uh, you really are that guy, and all of these young women uh, were lucky to grow up with you. Period. So I actually thank you for saying that. But I'm I'm like angry, sure. and I I sure. didn't want to talk about it. Michael O'Brien said my our, my publicist, my best dear friend, one of my dearest friends, yeah. said don't talk about it. You dignify it. But just this is maybe where the soundbite that they'll get it from. I don't know. But it's just um, it's unfortunate that a couple of really bad people yeah. continue to light the flames of garbage throughout our whole society. And so much is based on just garbage. That's not true. But about me, I'm like the first person that would help any kid. I would never ever when they said you did these things like actual actions like what? the You were around. <laughs> You were around kids in the my world. whole my whole career. I did and father never, show after father show, and we're legitimately. I know it's so easy to make these jokes, and now you now you can't anymore. I guess, but the I don't want to. That's the other thing is I wouldn't choose to do it now anyway. That's fine, what's so strange. Fine, but the point I'm trying to make is you were never accused of anything by anyone ever. And if no, I mean, by the way, we all know I, it. But that's what like people like a 12 year old goes. Why isn't he in jail? I don't know. Go, why aren't you in jail? You little. You know, sheep herded little bastard. I got, I got so many <laughs> threats. I'm not you, obviously. I'm, uh, but I got so many threats. People wanted to kill me, and and my thing was a. Well, threat. I want to kill you. Well, that's different. That has nothing to do with anything inappropriate than either of us done. That's something that you get aroused by. I think both, yes, but only in, if I'm inside a, uh, you know, I can't go there. Can't do this. Can't do the jokes we did, Pete. It's Amor, over. Come on. But no, no, can't do it. Even if you're in, you know, a you giant ar- ar- armoire. <laughs> but uh, what what I was going to say is, um, you know, I, I feel like I wish we could start the this whole podcast over again, because this will be the thing that people listen to. But it's funny because I've been doing a lot of stand up. I'm touring everywhere. I'm in Indianapolis this weekend. Really excited about it. My shows have been great. People are surprised that I'm more. I talk about this a little bit about, you know, I'm just not as blue, but I still talk about my my wiener because what else am i going to talk about i don't want to offend anybody right if i'm talking about him nobody gets hurt but again that's not for 12 year olds i perform in a place you got to be 21 you know yeah can't get to a theater because they serve booze so but i'm selling out everywhere not as a person but i wouldn't do the stuff that i used to do and they want me to do it they'll yell out you know sing the aristocrat sing or you know sing it i don't know why they want me to sing it but they want me to (laughs) <laughs> they want me to do stuff that I'm not capable of doing, and I wasn't capable of doing it when I did it. And then Gilbert Gottfried is who we have to blame for all of this. Yeah, because he said these things, and the- yeah, don't don't repeat them. But that's what that's the clip they're using. Yeah, it's literally they think it's the news, and then they believe ex porn actresses and just people that want to make a name on YouTube, and they're brainwashed, and they're cultists, and they're just they have they just can't think for themselves, and so- it's very very sad. So I have kind of a way to to 
uh, prove kind of what kind of a person you are, what kind of a guy you are. And I yeah, think- let's go that direction. That'll be good. Well, I think that I was, you know, again, thinking about you a lot and your career and listening to all your stories and knowing you a little bit personally is you you have be, you have been one of the closest friends to some of the the most iconic legendary comedians of our time, the time before us and now the time after us. Rodney Dangerfield, Richard Pryor, Gary Shandling, Sam Kennison are what I came up with. These are four guys who adored you. Everybody. Well, that that, that changed. You know, I had I had some issues. I, it, Sam and I were were closer, and then became more acquaintances as he went off and got a little more into his lifestyle. Gary and I, and in, in Judd Apatow's great documentary about him, The Zen Diaries of Gary Shanley, I come out and not unlike I did right at the beginning of this, uh, our conversation here, uh, I, I wasn't as high throttle, you know, with my with my anger and defense, but I shouldn't I have nothing to defend except I am, I am angry. But with Gary, who I love very, very much, um, there was an issue because uh, we had who was a mutual friend and he had a parting of ways with our dear friend, my dear friend and was Gary's dear friend, Brad Gray, but he, um, you know, felt uh, betrayed and to many feel he was betrayed and I was in the middle of it and I will always, they're both gone and I will always love them both always. And so Gary and I were very, very close for the first eight years of my career in LA. He was the first friend that I made. Mm-hmm. at the comedy store. I even voiced over bits for him that he would play on a pre-record, and we I'd go over his house and we'd write. And I, I am sad about that friendship, but I had a closeness with Gary that, um, and then we kind of made it up. We kind of, he kind of, I don't know what happened. I, under, I understood his position. I'm like that politically too. I understand you another are. person's position. You you I are. don't go... You know, I mean, I have a couple of people that I love that I'm texting. Please get vaccinated. You just had COVID in six months when you don't have antibodies. This thing's good. And I I just they don't want to respond. So I give up and I still love them. I'm not going to stop loving somebody because they believe differently than me. And that's how I approach my shows. That's how I approach human beings. But if you're cruel to me and lie about me and make up shit, then I just I am now at the point of not. Because I have about like, uh, ten thousand kids, I could I should sue <laughs> for no, defamation of character. But instead, <laughs> I just send them love and but I block them. Clear. I won't. I'm not doing negative anymore. I know, but to be clear, nobody that knows you has ever really spoken badly about you publicly. Not, no, not that knows me. Not that knows me. That's the only thing that matters. I, I know, but not if a bunch of people. Are, if your daughter's saying something to you that disturbs me because that's not a legacy. And I'll, I'll be able to, uh, I don't know, it's your actions. It's just how you are with people. And the next time they see me with Mary-Kate and Ashley at an event, they'll be like, oh my God, how could they be victims still? You know, I'm the victim, <laughs> I'm the actual victim. I did humor that is uh, completely at this moment in time, uh, not something that should be done. But and you, I, I do apologize for that. I apologize for the humor that I did years ago, how it rests today, because it doesn't belong. And it did, when you look at it now, it did more harm than good, but it didn't affect their lives because they weren't born. And their parents laughed at it because they knew that I was coming from a place of the sick. Sarah Silverman said it really brilliantly. You know, I, I'm sorry if anything I did in the past, I think she said affects anyone today, but that was then. I would never say that now. Right. And she did a lot of brilliant Holocaust jokes because the Holocaust yeah. was one of the worst things that ever happened, yeah. except for what's going on now. <laughs> We're not there yet, thank God. Well, by the way, the where are you on the Holocaust? Pros, cons? Well, you know, um, I don't think I should mention anything about that because um, there's a lot of sick jokes that go with that that I would do that would take us back 15 years. In fact, Gary Shandling had one of the best jokes ever I ever heard. and. You can't do them. And there's enough hate in the world because there's real hate in the world right now that's on public display. Yeah. And yeah. because of that, um, it's now a I, complete I don't I, it's a reset and it's a complete do over. And that I'm a different person. I'm a different person than I was. That's why if, if a 12 year old goes apologize, I go, no, you 
you know what? Uh, I, I, I'll apologize. I'll be the bigger person. I'm sorry that I said something out of context for the present day, 10 or 15 years ago, and it doesn't belong. Watch some of these great old movies. They don't, you know, you can't do them now. You can't do those jokes because the needle's moved. And I'm, I'm good with that. You know, I'm good to feel bad about, I, I, of course I feel bad about things that hurt anybody today, but not to believe it. <laughs> I did any of the actions of my jokes. It's called fucking stand up comedy. You know, we've all done dark jokes, yes. except for Bill Cosby, who was holier than thou, and he did the actual actions. So, and yes, that has uh, been uh, proven innocent by a court of civil law. I don't know and, what the hell happened. And 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 several other comedians. And what we were we're we're right. Trying. And so I'm the one who said stuff. Like uh, I've always been a junior high school kid, so yeah. I'm immature and stupid. That's why I would draw a penis on a script that kids can't see. And if the director says, hey, you got uh, this this test dummy to talk to as an actor and you're in the kid's bedroom and it's only guys on the set and the kids can't see it. So in my book, I'm not completely accurate, but it doesn't matter. It's in the book. Yeah. And then I apologize afterward. And that's what people talked about when I did yeah. that one radio show. And that that was nobody saw it. Right. Literally, nobody saw it. The joke was. The TVs you're on, and that was the punchline. So unfortunately, my punchline that wasn't reality came back to bite me in the ass. So you can take I don't know what to tell you. I feel I hate feeling like I'm on the defensive. I'm more on the aggressive. I'm I'm very angry. I at, understand. At, at I understand. I understand shit. that because, but I also want to fix it. And my what I'm doing now in stand up is better than any. I'm I'm going to shoot a special in the coming months. It's going to be the best thing I ever did, and it's. I know that because it's all about not letting negative in and being kind to each other and all that stuff that I actually believe heavily. That's why I have three daughters and why I'm close with every single kid, more more so than almost anybody, every person on that, that show and every other show I did. I did a sitcom with um, uh, Jonathan Katz, was the exec producer, yep. and this show should have lasted. It was called Raising Dad. And we did 24 of them for the WB, but they didn't pick it up, but it was popular in England. And Jerry Adler, who was Hesh on The Sopranos, was my dad. Mm -hmm. Andy Kindler, who we loved, was my principal. I was a teacher. And my daughters were Kat Dennings and Brie Larson. And their, and Kat's best friend on the show was Megan Good. So, okay, these are all gonna be stars, these yeah. kids. I mean, like the biggest, right? Marvel stars, and I'm here being a good role model on the set. And so everybody that has said, hey, it's just kids. No adult believes it. They goes, every, any adult that goes on these things goes, what are you kids talking about? Gen Z's out of their minds. You know, this guy's, and it was sent out by, again, like some horrible, if you, if you look at the sort, I don't want to give her any cred, but she's, uh, I don't know. I don't want to give anybody, the, let's well, just I'll erase the whole week. Can we start now? So Pete, what's it like to get fired? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I'm here to tell you that I've organized uh, a PSA with all of the women that you've worked with attesting to your true character. Well, yeah, well, my true character is uh, it's it's pretty noble, except when I was uh, uh, single and available for 20 years. I, I want and, and when you're acting with somebody, you know, uh, it's it's a different thing. You have to create boundaries, you know, also. Yep. Yeah. As a man as well. Sure. And, and sometimes people can misread people. That's the other thing that happens. Well, so the thing, the thing that's about you, though, I'm going to quit showbiz and become a one arm fiddler. No, I think that's I, that's still going to be showbiz. And those gigs are even harder to get. So one arm fiddler. I think everybody would give me money if I had my little fiddle case open. How come all of these people that you've worked with your entire life like you so much? How come I like you so much? Because because I have love for people and I love good, smart people. And you and I have liked each other from the moment we met when I came into Sirius and I sat there. But we met in a club, didn't we? We met at Aspen. No, we met at HBO Comedy Fest Las Vegas, maybe. Right. And that I would be canceled for that set. <laughs> That was right when people were first, uh, I think, seeing a lot of your stand up, like in a, at a, at a. Well, not really, because I'd already had my HBO special, That Ain't Right. And that was one of the, I was 2007, I think. 
And that was one of the highest rated HBO specials they'd had around then. And that's the one where I dropped F-bombs every, you know, there was like every two minutes. It was like a rim shot. I and then it. people gave me shit for that. You you just, but people always give you shit unless you're doing something as brilliant as Jim Gaffigan or, you know, or Brian Regan or, or Jerry or Sebastian or Ray Romano, where you just don't do anything to ruffle anybody's feathers and you just do smart, astute, great observational comedy. And I respect the hell out of it. And then I hang out with, with Dave Chappelle. Uh, it's his birthday yesterday. I think you're running this the day after his birthday uh -huh. and, um, and, and Bill Burr and, and they're, you know, we, I, I've always just tried to outgross comedians just for fun. It's like sparring. And it doesn't mean you're that person. When you find out a couple of our people that we've known over the years are that person, yeah. that's quite disturbing. But I'm not, I've never been close with anyone in my whole life who was guilty of the stuff that they ended up, you know, being canceled for. I, I, I know those people, but I've never been close with any of them because I'm a, I think I'm a good judge of character. I thought so, Harvey Weinstein was your closest friend for years. He managed me for two years. I'm not joking. He did? He did. When I was 22 years old, Brad Gray, who uh, became my manager, worked for Harvey as a runner in Buffalo. And Harvey said, we want to manage you. And because I was on the Comedy Store College Tour at 22 years old. Holy and Brad God. was 20 and Harvey was like 26. He never touched me. And, um, and you know, he was uh, difficult and he was a, wanted to make movies. He was a rock promoter. So I was with him for a year or two and then Brad separated from him and uh, they had, you know, a little lawsuit, but then they ended up, I don't know what happened. There was some Miramax or movies that were done through Paramount when Brad ran Paramount. I don't understand the whole thing or the Weinstein company. I don't remember, but anyway, um, yeah, I mean, obviously what he's done i have no i have no desire to know people that are uh, of that ilk have you ever been surprised yeah i think you just actually said it when when allegations are made much less proven that somebody's done you know something i, I feel like i feel like if you're in the business like i had heard about cosby you know 20 years from a woman from one of his victims who was on the show told me that he groped her and i was i contacted her when it all came out and i was like do you want me to corroborate the thing you told me 20 years ago she was like i don't want any part of that but the point is you hear things when you're, you're so it's just you never it seems like i didn't i was very naive to it and i um and yeah and i don't want to dwell on this anymore i think i've already done myself in i've already ruined myself with the so opening of this podcast i i do think that people need to be held accountable for their actions and uh and what he did um, I, I believe, um, I'm, I'm not a, a jury, but I am not a fan because all he said is don't talk dirty on stage and then did right. lascivious things. Um, and there's so many people, I mean, there's so many people, but we hear that all the time. And then there's also people that are sex addicts yeah. that have done stuff and they go, I'm sorry. And they put out an apology. I haven't put out an apology because I, I'm, I've done it at the beginning of this podcast. I apologize for three stupid ass things that I've done and a bunch of stand up that most of it's, I think pretty good, but, but, it's, I'm, jokes, it's, but it's all jokes. And, and, and it's well, but the jokes, but jokes with people you're learning is and what we've learned is jokes can hurt, you know? Um, but meanwhile, if I would say those jokes to people that I looked up to, you know, if you listen to Rodney's stuff or you listen to right. a lot of people's stuff um, and Rodney was a hero. He was, he was a big mentor of mine when you were talking about my friends he was someone that I met. He put me on the Young Comedian special, his first one that he hosted for HBO. And Sam Kennison was on right after me. And I had the same amount of time as Sam. And I said, Rodney, you cut me down to like three and a half minutes. And Sam had 13 minutes. He goes, yeah, but he killed, man. <laughs> I, went, I went, Rodney, I did too. I really killed. I know, man. But uh, I mean, I don't know. It was Sam. And so I, I didn't care because I loved Rodney. I was friends with him. I was with him at the very end when he went into a coma after a attempted brain surgery um, that I did on him. No, that was done um, <laughs> at a hospital and it didn't work, um, which is very sad. And then Richard, I knew from hosting the comedy store for eight years and Richard is a lot of people's hero because he was starting by doing similar Cosby stuff. I saw a clip of Johnny Carson talking to Richard saying, well, some people say that you, uh, I do the worst impressions. Some people you? say that you took uh, 
uh, uh, Bill Cosby's material. And then Richard like owned it. He was like, yeah, yeah, I did. I can't remember what the clip was. I don't do it right. But Richard's key was, you know, he'd go on Barbara Walters and, and lie. And then she'd show him a clip and say, you said this and you lied. He goes, yeah, I guess I did, <laughs> but I'm not lying now. And, but Richard was a, an anomaly and a uh, maverick and um, a hero of mine. And he was so kind to me. Mm. Um, and that's in my book too. There's a lot of, yeah. you know, the thing that people are giving me shit for from that one thing in the book, the rest of it is about how my sisters died, how my ex-wife, uh, who was my wife then, almost died during the birth of my baby, um, my firstborn. And that's where the aristocrats joke came from. I did yeah. it because Paul Provenza was at the hospital. No, it was at my home when my uh, kid's mom came home and she almost died during the birth. And so I wrote that chapter and had to send it to my oldest daughter and my ex-wife to make sure that I did everything right. And they were going, and it was painful for us. It was not how it happened. That's what the book's about, how comedy gets you through death. And of course, these 12 year olds don't read the book. I don't think they can read. They only have to go, oh, I saw in that comment that he's guilty. <laughs> you know? And then that's like, that's just like, and because I laugh, then I'll laugh after saying that. They'll say, oh, it's that maniacal laugh. You know, they're, they're just completely off and ignorant. And um, I want to help them. I, I, cause I am, I, I, I am, somebody said you're America's dad. And they say it to me a lot. And, and I, I don't mind that title if they don't mind that I've done R rated humor through the years. Cause I started at 17 years old doing stand up, and then didn't get on full house as an actor till 30 years old. So, well, I did want to ask you. Uh, I'm sorry, we're out of time. About about um, being a dad. You have three daughters. We've talked about this in the past. I always love to ask uh, other dads for advice. My daughters are are almost 14 and 16, and you know, there's all kinds of challenges for adolescent girls. What what advice? Like, how, how do you keep that? How do you have you maintained such a great relationship with your daughters through that time? Did, did did you have a time where they were like? get out of my face, don't even talk to me, and then they come back to you. I hear that. Oh, I mean, absolutely. That's called growing up. And yeah. But there was so much love, and, and their mom and I um, got divorced years ago. So they were young. They were four, seven, and nine. Very, very painful. Divorce, to me, was even harder than death. I, I lost yeah. two sisters, scleroderma, and the other was schizophrenic and um, died of a brain aneurysm. We've had a rough life, our family. So that's why I turned to, you know, inappropriate humor because that's like everything else was like, I mean, I, I equate it to a, a soldier out on a battlefield uh, and sees death and then somehow is able to make a joke about it. That's the only thing that can pull you out of having a complete PTSD mental breakdown the rest of your life. I had somebody die like every year and faced a lot of stuff and still am, still am with people I love and care about. That's why I also, you know, my advice is, uh, yes, when your kids are 16, when my middle daughter was 16, she was going through a phase, you know, and I talked about her in an HBO special once and I got in trouble and I apologized. And I just said something like I was, uh, I won't even do the joke. Why repeat it again? And, and but, but she was right. And I apologized. And um, I've always had a really open relationship with them. I'm incredibly close with my daughters. They're my life and I have an amazing wife and they love her. Um, so, you know, I would say when they're young, before 12, you drive them everywhere and you just love them no matter what they do. Yeah. You got to give them guardrails. You got to discipline them. Like for your daughter to say, didn't he do something? I would punish her because it involves me. You know, if, if, if she thinks something negative of me, I would say, you know, ground her for like six months. Don't let her. Well, that's oh, that's quarantine. Uh, that's just normal. No, I did. I actually did. I took her phone from her and I said, you need to learn how to find out where the truth lies. And that's why I've asked her to join. Up. No, uh, she's a <laughs> you have to wheel her in uh, like a South Park episode. But, uh, but, the, but then then after 16, you know, at 12, they got to have a phone. So then you got to make sure they never turn off their um location, you know, find my iPhone or whatever yeah, you have yeah, on it. Yeah. You have to know where they are. And if they turn it off, you take the phone away and they oh, can't yeah. leave the house yeah. because nothing good happens after midnight is a true thing. Well, and my daughter has a burner phone connected to a drone. So it's very That's hard. fine. 
Excuse well, me. you could always have the drone actually physically pick her up because one day they're going to have those. They're going to have yeah. claws on them and and pick them up like the when you're <laughs> when you're at the bowling alley and you want to get the stuffed animal. Yes. Out of the thing. But um, it, it, the key is just to love them and be honest with them. And, I, and I've had to be very honest with my kids. Very honest. And I haven't lied to my kids. And that's really hard because, you know, a single guy at 42 years old and their mom and I, you know, split up and it's really hard. Divorce is really hard on kids. So it requires more communication and more love. And you're not divorced, right? No, I won't let her leave me. She's tried. When is that scheduled, though? Probably like every other month. Did was she part of the the negotiations with Sirius? <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have gone well. She once told a comedy club owner uh, that I was auditioning for to go fuck himself. So I don't want her involved <laughs> in my negotiations. She doesn't. She didn't have that kind of uh, ability to, to to suffer fools that we in entertainment right. have to. You know. Um, before we should I, record this again tomorrow so that we so I can take back all the things that no, are going to get picked no. up. This is going to help you because you're going to get clips from this. I'm so if scared to post listen, this. I, I know I got to let you go. If you want me to take something out, I will. Your penis. No, but the thing is, see, that's I tell you, no, but oof, I don't want to see those COVID pants. Um, I, yeah, just wear my shorts. What well, was that? Your shorts were folded up. No, I have, uh, I have like a. <laughs> Why are they folded up? Do you keep packs of cigarettes in them? Pete, I have, please, I have, Pete, below frame, please. Pete. <laughs> I have shorts with tights under them. Anyway, <laughs> I do a lot of lower body strength training. Me too. I do it a lot when I'm on the toilet. Can you do me a favor? No. Can you can you endorse me for town council? Yeah, do you need that? Well, what, wait a minute. You running town council? You don't even wear pants. That's, I'll take that as part of the endorsement. Um, <laughs> You know where are you really is? running for town council? Yeah, they they the local of uh, uh, Democrats had recruited me, and it's where Levity Live is. You performed there many times. Yeah, yeah. Nyack, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, I did, I did that because I was there, and I really I can't stop doing stand up. I haven't had this uh, happen to me since 1995, and maybe that's because I feel more need to do it, and people need entertainment more, and it's very healthy for me. You know? I'm yeah. Not I, when you were there, I was out of town or I would have come down. And next time I, I hope to see you in person. But Well, I had a funny thing happen. I wish you would have been there. Uh, Michael Che came down one night and um, and so he went up and he's I just love him so much. Yeah, it's insane great. and how smart he is and funny he is. And he yep. loves pranking. He just thinks it's the best thing in the world. So I said, look, I'm going to open the I'll go out. I'll open the show and then I'll bring you out. Um, and I did, but we had a lovely opener. Oh God, what's her name? She's so good. Damn it. I'll remember it. And you can put it in the notes, <laughs> but, but I, I said, we have a special good evening, everybody. And they, they seemed excited to see me. Uh, it's, and it was full, it was sold out, but they had on, they but it wasn't able to be sold out because of the, you know, the restrictions. Yeah, at the time. Yeah. So, um, I say, I've got a special guest. And I wasn't going to do this. I couldn't help it. He's one of my favorite people. You know him from his new HBO Max show, and he's from SNL. Here he is, Michael J. And then he he comes out. We hug each other. He's like, why? I said, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. I'm so sorry. So I said, when it's over, don't introduce me. I've got a music thing that plays. You don't have to do anything. Of course, after what I did to him, he he's finished. He said, that's my time. I just wanted to say something right now. Are you ready for your father growing up? Yeah. One of the best comedians, one of the OGs, one of the best. And they just kept, Bob Saget. It was literally a DJ move. What That's I did, awesome. you know, we're in the house. You know, the, all the cardinal sins of don't build me up. Man, I miss hanging out with comedians. Yeah, that's the other thing I, I've been enjoying a bit. But I don't love doing lineups. I, I like doing an hour and a half on the road because I got to work this special. Yeah, yeah. So I got to find it. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm in Indianapolis, Indianapolis at, at uh, Helium this Friday, Saturday. And then I'm, I'm on the road everywhere. I'm, I'm just going it. everywhere. I'm on your website. And after I press stop, I'll read every place you're going to be and include it. Bob Saget.com. So yeah. It's, that's and it's Saget with an S. It's so weird when you're on social media and it only happens to me on TikTok when I post something. I sang like a, a song that I that I responded to. 
I liked it was Cardi B and, and Lizzie uh, have this new song out. And um, I liked it. And um, and I just did the beginning, 20 seconds, right? And I'm smoking a cigar. And, oh, my God, the, the outrage, you know. <laughs> and people are like, I don't know what they're saying. But one of the things that they tend to go to is um, – I can't remember. There's so many things. I don't remember what the point was. Well, I know I got to let you go. You said, but, but, um, will you I, cut out that, will you cut out that last part that I just said? Yes. Where I drifted off. Yeah. So let's just go to this. So you could cut in here. So, so I'm, so I'm, I'm performing all over the country for probably at least a year and a half. I, I might go direct a movie. I've got a movie coming out. I don't know when it's called blue iguana. They might change the name to killing Daniel. So look for one of those two. And then uh, stand up everywhere. And it's bobsaget.com and the podcast. You're supposed to say this, but I'll say it. It's so well, it's one of the best I've heard. And everybody should check it out. Bob Saget is here for you. And I think Bob, it's Bob Saget's here for you. So the apostrophe S yes. it's a conjunction. So I, I, I have conjunctivitis. I, I see. I seriously, though, like you're one of the handful of people that I whose approval I need. And it's like. I think it's weird if I if, if I run for for town council, unless certain people I admire, like you say, yeah, you would be good at that. Even though you've spent your career doing this, you would be good at that. Do you want to do that? I do. I well, then let me before I endorse you, let me see your platform and everything. So send me all the stuff. I don't want it just to say, you know, everything opposite of the no, other. No, no. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. But just the idea of, of what like, is town council? I, I, I don't know. Can so, you be mayor? No, of West like Nyack, five councilmen on the on the town, but it's not legit. Oh, I don't mind doing that. You got a good mind. Do you get along with the other people? Are you willing to listen and and collaborate? No. <laughs> so you're so as soon as masks and guns get brought up, you're just done. I'll run out of there like a cartoon dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's oh helpful. my. It's My publicist is going to hate this podcast. He's going to say you did everything you're not supposed to do. I'll let him. Uh, I'll let him decide. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate it. I don't and want to say goodbye to you. I miss you. I'm. I miss you a lot. And when you're back here or wherever you are, I'll. I'll, I'll come to you. I. I would love to. To see you and be with you. And whenever I am, I feel better about myself. So I was really excited. That's really you. sweet. Do you really mean that? Always have the idea that when I first met you, the very the very time I. The very first time I interviewed you, I felt like I dan we danced, and I'll never forget that. No, we did. We were in an Arthur Murray's dance studio. That's we right. were actually yeah. taking lessons. No, but the first time I came into, we knew each other before, but in, yeah. in, in, we met in in uh, Aspen, but when or Vegas, not Aspen. Sorry, was it Aspen or Vegas? They're both HBO. That's why they get confused. HBO. Yeah, it was one or the other. But I, I have a feeling it might have been Vegas. It was when Jamie Kennedy and I sang "Rolling with Saget." I think maybe. I think it was because Aspen. I Aspen. I didn't do a set. Aspen. I roasted Rodney. Oh, I wish I was there for that. I definitely wasn't there for that. But yeah, yeah. When we met there, we just anyway. I've just always felt like I knew you, and yeah, uh, I, we do know. Comedians all know each other, and they and can tell we the character. Broadway, you were amazing on Broadway. Uh, amazing, amazing. Oh, that was fun. What play did you see me in? What I forget the name of it. it was, was it one, Hand to God? Yes, so good. I was a priest in that one. That would have thrown the kids off. <laughs> Why is he not Danny Tanner? Bob I Saget. It. I miss you, Pete. So I thank you. you. Thanks thank for cutting you. anything out that has to do with canceling. <laughs> good. You have about six minutes there. You're good, buddy. You're fine. Hey, well, man. you take care of yourself. I'm going to go call Gilbert now, and you know what that's going to be like. Yeah. Uh, have fun with that. It's it is fun, but he's, he's going to say stuff I need to edit out. He's yeah, he's the original one of the original uh, canceled. I feel like comedian. he is the guy that said stuff and then didn't realize he said anything wrong. And still hasn't. No, right, well, he does. He he does realize he's scared of doing anything to hurt anybody. Really? That sucks. He's, he's a sweet. sweetheart. He, he would never hurt anybody. Right? He was just you know he found his niche yelling and and he's funny. <laughs> He's Iago. He's the bird from Aladdin. Yeah. All right, bud.
All right. You oh take care. Tell, tell your daughter that, yeah, that I'm. Uh... I did. Bob, I pulled the car over. I was like, what are you possibly saying? I didn't even look up what she was saying. I was like, you must be mistaken. He is one of the kindest men. He always has been. But you can't go and say the problem is you can't go and say, hey, everybody, I'm one of the kindest men. I'm a good dad. You can't no, do can't. that. And I'm I can't. I can, you can, but they're not listening to you. They need, you know, somebody that they need. All, all I need is a hit TV series. That's all. It, that's all it takes. That's what's. That's what's so fucked up. There's like, some horrible people, but once they get a, a thing, everybody goes, "Oh, they're great." Until somebody comes up and talks about them, nobody's going to come out and talk about me. And if they do, I'll just buy them clothes at Bloomingdale's. I'm still taping. Oh no! All right, all right. I miss you. I Thanks for you. using this stream yard. It's really good quality. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Thank you so much. I love you too. Be well. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sign you a thing for you for a city council. I just, I just want you to tell me that I'm going to just don't there. say uh, you're pro anything. <laughs> I think you and I probably disagree on nothing politically. I would probably agree with that. Yeah. I get vaccinated 12 times a day. <laughs> In the penis. I'm yeah, I actually have said that on stage. And uh, I should just do a show for 12 year olds and end it all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Be well, man. All right, man. Thank you. I'll see you later. <laughs>